My first guest, though, on today's show is a man who has sold more than 50 million albums around the world. He's performed for presidents and prime ministers and even the Pope. He performed at Pavarotti's funeral. And it's a great pleasure to welcome one of the greatest tenors of all time, Andrea Bocelli. Thank you so much for talking to us. Hi, thank you. It's such a thrill to talk to you because you've had such amazing success over the last 10 years. Is music the thing you love the most in life? Well, fortunately, I love many things in my life. And it's important to have many, many interesting uh, inter interests. Otherwise, also the scene would be poor. I hope to touch the, the heart of the people. I'm not sure. But I do all my best because it's my goal. I sing for this. I mentioned at the beginning of the show uh, that Celine Dion had made some very, very complimentary comments about you. How does it feel to be so well respected and loved by people who are so successful in their own right? <laughs> Celine, she's very, she, Celine uh, is very kind with me because she's a friend and uh, she likes a lot the sing. Uh, when we are together, we speak a lot of the sing. And but <laughs> that's not true it's a very is exaggerated great answer to a very embarrassing question let's move on and talk about your childhood were you a musical child well probably yes because my passion was to sing and to to play the uh, instruments and and everywhere i had to sing in the school in the church in the family and probably yeah what about your mum and dad? Were they musical? No. My family, they they did completely different things. My father and my mother uh, sold uh, agricultural machines. Do you ever ask yourself, why me? Why are you the one that's the most successful classical artist since 1997? Why you have sold 50 million albums and so many other people that try so hard to be successful have not had your success? I don't know. It's, uh, success has not rules. Otherwise, it would be uh, easy to, uh, to repeat again. But um, I, I am very honest in the things that I sing and, and uh, probably the people feel this approach with the music now you're on your 10th album this new one's called Amore it features lots of different guests including Christina Aguilera uh, it's got Kenny G and also Stevie Wonder are the CDs the most important thing to you or is it performing live well um, honestly I uh, I divided always my um, classical career and and uh, pop career and in in life, um, I sang always, almost only classical music, because uh, otherwise it could be a little bit dangerous for the voice. It was fascinating to me when I did the research for this interview who your musical inspirations were. Uh, they're quite varied, aren't they? Oh, many. In classical, uh, my teacher, Franco Corelli, the, the best tenor in the world, I think. And uh, in pop, uh, many, many artists. Uh, Frank Sinatra, for example, and um, uh, Barbara Streisand, and, and many others. So was there ever a point then where you considered going from classical to be pop and maybe the next Frank Sinatra? No, um, my passion, uh, it has been always for, for uh, very strong for operatic music. But if you were inspired by him and loved him so much, why didn't you want to be like him as a performer? No, I like a lot the Sinatra song and when I performed in piano bar uh, when I was uh, younger I very often I sang Frank Sinatra songs but my passion uh, it has been always for operatic music all those years back when you were doing the piano bars and clubs did people always tell you then that you got an extraordinary voice well um, often uh, very often people ask me to sing and then uh, very very often people told me you have to record uh, albums you should have to do this or to do that um, but it's true my my success it has, is is arrived uh, very late but there is an expression in Italy we say better late than never <laughs> and do you enjoy being famous? Well, uh, I love to, to know that uh, my voice speaks to the, to the heart of the people. That's, that's the most important thing. But, of course, the success, 
uh, take away to you many things for example the privacy uh, you have to stay very often very far to your country to your friends to your family and so it's difficult and presumably you miss them when you're away, do you? Yes, of course, a lot. The interesting thing about you is that you've sold 50 million albums, yet not everybody knows of Andrea Bocelli. Your success is almost quiet, isn't it? Certainly when you compare to someone like Madonna, who has huge fame, but hasn't sold as many records as you in the last 10 years. <laughs> well, um, no, now, now I think that many people know me <laughs> because I see uh, when I walk um, on the road, but uh, nobody can nobody can compete with Madonna's uh, fame. A cousin of mine saw you last year and said it was one of the most moving experiences of her life. And she said what was most compelling for her was the fact that all the men in the audience were crying at certain parts in the show. How do you manage to get that kind of emotion into your show via the music and touch the hearts so passionately of those who come and see you? Well, my, uh, also, also the men can cry. Also, if my father, when I, when I was a child, told me always, a man don't has, doesn't has to cry, never. <laughs> but instead of, it's not true, the man can cry, especially for emotions. I think it's my character. I'm very... Uh, I have the passion in, in my heart. In terms of your career, it really couldn't be going better right now. There's been a resurgence of classical music, almost crossing into pop, Il Divo, G4, Russell Watson, have all had huge albums in the last year. Why do you think it's suddenly so popular to sing the classics again? Uh, I know uh, today there is the... Um, uh, the people likes to do uh, crossover, but uh, I don't like this because classical and pop music are two different languages, and I love, I want, I absolutely want to respect both the language and not to mix the things. I totally understand what you're saying, but surely by making an album with Stevie Wonder, uh, with Kenny G and Christina Aguilera, as is the case with the new Amora CD, you are crossing the boundary from the classics into pop. No, it's not crossover because in, with them I, I, I sing in pop music. Mm, there is nothing in the style or in my voice of the tenor. Yeah, because also in pop music uh, there are many, many different styles and Christina's style is different to my style. And we have also two different audience and it's nice to, to sing together just for this. But the problem is, Andrea, you've sold 50 million albums, you've been number one in the classic charts since 1997. Where do you go from there? When you're at the top, it's hard to know what to do next, isn't it? My goal is to to make a long holiday now <laughs> i'm tired because i am i work a lot and i fly a lot and i and because i suffer in the plane because i'm worried um so but it's, it's okay it's my job you don't like flying no absolutely um uh, i'm worried I'm more than stop. I don't know. It, we are too high. That's right. It's just completely unnatural, isn't it, to be that high off the ground? I mean, you've flown in to do this interview today. It's one of two interviews that you're doing this year, full stop. Would you prefer just staying at home and not having to do interviews like this, and even not having to tour and just let the CDs and your live shows in Italy do the talking? I, do I have to be very honest? <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't like. I wouldn't like to. I never want to speak. It's better to sing and to listen to the music. So therefore, with you being so shy, how do you cope with the live tours and standing in front of 20, 30, 40, or even 50,000 people like you do on regular occasions? I, I, uh, I have to be convinced to be in good shape, and I don't think I go. There must be so many things you're thinking about when you're doing these live shows, from the lighting to the scenery, not to mention remembering your words. Is the only thing you worry about your voice in the orchestra, or do you worry about all the other things as well? It's uh, the, the first condition, because uh, otherwise it's impossible to sing. It's always to sing in theatre without amplification. It's the best way to listen a voice. But 
when we want to listen music uh, all together with many many people it's the only solution is the big arena and the system of amplification has to be the first the best possible is it still exciting and a thrill for you doing the live shows now well uh, the condition to be uh, excited is to, to be able to to do good music if you hadn't have had all the fame and success around the world and you just have had 10 albums selling 50 million copies and you didn't have to do the interviews and the tours would you have been happier with that than the way it is now probably yes because my goal is to leave uh, albums and uh, recording with uh, operatic music operas and, and many things but it's very important also the contact with the audience because if the audience don't know you uh, you can't to reach to achieve the their heart is there any song in the world you would like to sing but can't well there are many classical songs in in english in american that i would like to do but my english is not enough and before to do this i have to improve my accent are you working on that every day and um, no but i'm around the world every day and i speak often in english of course but uh, i don't know how much do you have to practice to keep that voice so pure and so natural every day at least uh, one two hours it's like a gym but i have a big passion and for me it's enjoying so it's still fun what do you practice then do you practice the stuff you've done in the past on the cds or do you have fun with stuff that you would never do in public well, uh, there are two parts of, of, of uh, the exercises. The, f the first one is the vocalization. Uh, it's the exercise only for the voice. The second part is uh, to study new repertoire. Now, at the moment, um, I'm studying uh, many things. M M Mesa di Gloria of Puccini's uh, for uh, Florence in theater at the end of this month and then uh, in June I will be in Naples for uh, Petit Messe Solennelle of Rossini and uh, next year in January Faust in French and many other things which is the most popular song that you've recorded in the past Ness and Dorma I think has to be the most famous classical song probably ever because of Pavarotti yeah probably yes it's the most famous thing that I recorded and it's a there is Nessun Dorma in an album called uh, Viaggio Italiano do you enjoy singing that because it sounds like to me one of the most fun songs to sing because it's just so big and it gets bigger doesn't it it's always a big challenge because it's uh, everyone wait for you at the end of the piece <laughs> <laughs> are you going to get that note yeah do you know you're always going to get it or is there a certain tension that you might not if I'm in good shape, uh, less. But if I'm not in good in good shape, uh, <laughs> it's terrible. Does your physicality affect the singing? If you're overweight, for example, does that affect your voice? Well, never to sing after after dinner or after lunch. Uh, at least uh, three or four hours later. What is your regime then when you're doing a live show or recording an album? Do you stay silent? Do you not talk for a day? Or can you just sing any time? No, absolutely. I, I remain in silence all, uh, all the day. Is that frustrating or is it actually quite nice not to have to speak? No, it's uh, not beautiful because uh, t it's important to, to have a communication with the people. How much effort do you have to put into getting your notes? Because it seems as if they just flow out of your mouth if you suffer singing also the people that uh, will listen your singing will suffer so it's important to be very very natural very um, uh, very tranquil you've performed for kings and queens and presidents and prime ministers all around the world has there been any highlight of anybody you've performed to uh, it's difficult to say Bec probably um, uh, f in, f in front of the Pope. Have you performed for this Pope yet? Yeah, f yeah. What is the feeling inside when you know you're performing to the most famous man in the world? Well, it's it it's not the the problem is not how much he's famous and people in front of you, but how much he knows the music, how much he's involved in the music. For example, this Pope 
uh, he knows the music very very well and he loves uh, Mozart when uh, I, I performed in front of him uh, I had to perform Mozart so <laughs> it was difficult so I suppose for you then you'd rather perform to a president than someone who knows the, the music note perfect is that right yeah, yeah. But but often the presidents are involved in music. For example, Clinton played the saxophone, and uh, and Berlusconi, our president, he he sang uh, when he was younger. What about venues? I mean, you've performed in the biggest venues around the world, all the biggest arenas, uh, the most famous. Is there any thrill doing a venue, or is it again just about the music? Does it not matter to you where you perform? No, every, uh, the place is very important because it's very important the acoustic and the atmosphere. For example, I remember uh, a big emotion when I sang in in the arena in Verona because it's the the biggest theater where you have to sing without amplification for fifteen thousand people. Hang on, you've got to sing for fifteen thousand people without a microphone. Yeah. yeah. How do you do that then? <laughs> it's uh, a good theater there is a beautiful acoustic and you have to sing a little bit stronger <laughs> <laughs> how can you be louder than an orchestra though I don't understand that how do they get the balance right it, 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 the balance it depends on the conductor the orchestra stays in, in front of you in the beat in the pit and uh, you have to try to sing as strong as possible. I think this is probably the silliest question I'm going to ask, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Do you have a rider? Do you have any requests before you go on stage? Do you want a Lima or oranges or do you need M&Ms or do you have any specific requests? No, 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 only water. <laughs> only water. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving you some water. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> My dressing room, it's very, very easy. Hollywood. Do you have any aspirations now? Is there anything you'd like to do that you haven't done so far? Uh, it, it's difficult to say. I, um, I dream to, to, to sing still many, many titles until I will have a good voice. And, and uh, another dream is to, to find the time for a long holiday. <laughs> Right, let's just go back on one thing there you said. Until I have a good voice. Do you not think you've got a good voice now? No. Uh, no, it's impossible to know this. Uh, uh, but I I have to believe that my voice can create a, some good emotions in, in the heart of the people. Before you go, I know you've got two children. Are they remotely musical? Could we have Andreas Jr. being the next classical star? Mm, I don't know, it's difficult. They love music. But they listen very different kind of music by my music. And uh, if you ask to them who is the best singer, they will answer my daddy. But when I sing at home, they 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 tell me always, Daddy, stop, please. <laughs> <laughs> so they've heard it all before, but nevertheless, they're still proud. Yeah. They are proud. They, they, yeah, they are proud, but they don't love to listen vocalization at all. <laughs> <laughs> it must be tiring after a while. Yeah. My final question has to be this, and it's it's a peculiar question, but your music is without question going to be around forever. How does that feel, knowing that your records are going to be played in a hundred, two hundred years time by people who will idolize you and just see the splendor in your voice? Well, it. If I if I if my job if, is the singer, probably is for this because when I was uh, a child, listening to the great voice, uh, the greatest voices, uh, I remember many tears and dreams and emotions, and uh, my goal is to leave something in the heart of the people.